Ezekiel, my dear son, please go and get your keyboard and play for me. Your guitar. Go and get your guitar. Give us a close shot and play for me, please. He's, he said he's blindfolded. Okay, uh, Pastor Ben is in the house. Go and greet him for me. Thank you. Okay, at least you can easily go and get a uh, greet Jerry. He said he knows he's there. But there is a big bird. This is how you are when you don't know who you are. Oh, yeah, give me. When you don't know that God is your father. You are like someone who is blind. And then with that blindness, you are trying to answer questions of finances, questions of relationship, questions of family, political questions, um, career questions, health questions. When you don't know who you are, you are like a blind person who is trying to figure out his life. So what will happen majorly is that you will bump into this, bump into that. If there is a cliff there, you will fall off the cliff. You will make blunders of mistake with your life. Galatians chapter 2 verse 19. Galatians chapter 2 verse 19. Any believer that doesn't know who he is is walking around life blindfolded. And just imagine there is a cliff here. You will fall off the cliff. Imagine taking a walk from here to Ring Road in Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria, blindfolded. Every believer who does not know who he is is walking through life blindfolded, even though you're born again. He said, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all the requirements so that I might live for Christ. So you cannot bring it in New King James. This guy says, I'm trying to keep the law. I've not even started, but the law has condemned me. He said, for I through the law died to the law. What does he mean that I through the law died to the law? And what does he also mean by when I try to keep the law? Flip those two translations. When I try to keep the law, the law condemned me. Listen, there are 613 commandments, laws. 613. Before the law, before you even knew there was anything called law, you have already failed all. It's like, you are going on a road and you didn't know that it is one way. You have crossed the wrong way, gotten to the end of the wrong way, uh, 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 one way, one way. Only for you to look up at the signpost and realize that it's one way. But ignorance is no excuse. It's, you will pay for it. Whether you know that what you are doing is right or you don't know what you are doing is right, you have already broken the law. Before, another translation said, for it was through reading the scripture, I came to realize that I could never find favor with God by trying and failing to obey him. Whether you are aware or you are not aware is inconsequential. The point is that there are 613 laws. Whether you read it or you didn't read it, the consequences of the law is certain. We can look at some of the consequences of the law. 
Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 and verse 22. Verse 20 as well. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. This is Bible's prescription for anybody that breaks the law. Ezekiel 18 verse 4. Shall we read together? Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as, if, as well as the soul of the son. The soul whose sins will do what? Sealer. The soul whose sins shall do what? Die. It's not that, I didn't know that the soul whose sins will die you. That's the consequence of the law. He repeated it in verse 20. Put verse 20. Let's read together. One to go. The soul whose sins shall, the son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father build the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon them. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon them. So the soul that sins shall die. The law went on. Go to James chapter 2 verse 10. He said, ah, I obeyed one. So, so what's the solution to this? I obey, James, James chapter 2 verse 10. Shall we read together? Who's, for whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet stumbled in one point, is guilty of all. 613 laws. You obey one. You obey, you obey all. You obey 612. And you, you failed in one. At least they should mark you. Uh, that's 99. Pan, uh, uh, Mama Pamela, it's supposed to be 99. That's not percent. No, 99. 29.9. Yes, 99 and a half, Seth. <laughs> but the just in my best. Yes, I'm trying my best. And not only am I fasting this fast, um, it's only what I'm drinking. I've not abused anyone, I've not cursed anybody. I don't watch TV. I don't, I'm on WhatsApp. All, all these things I'm doing is that at the end of 30 days, of course, we are preparing for a new year, Shay. Yes. So that when this new year comes, God will see that I, at, I did my best. But the law says that if in all this fast you are fasting, that in the middle of the fast, one day, you mistakenly, mistakenly threw uh, um, sweet. Uh, sweet into your mouth. You have, all the fast is gone. That's how the Old Testament people lived. So, so the law already condemned you before you started. The, the, uh, New Century Version said, it was the law itself that killed me. The law has said, if you do this, you're already dead. You don't already do one. So are you not dead? That's how the law operated. But Paul began saying, how do I get out of this mess? The law demanded death from me. How do I get out? Bring that scripture back. Let's see how you get out. That scripture of um, Galatians chapter 2 verse 19. How do I get out of this mess? I'm already in a mess, NLT. So we have satisfied the first condition. The first condition is this, that before you ever did anything good, you have already failed. Your report card was ready before you started. Yes, you carry last. Forget all your effort. He says, so I died to the law. How did I die to the law? He said, I stopped trying to meet all his requirements. So since everything I will ever do to obey the law, I can't. Paul said, look at the way out of it. You know what Jesus did? Come on. But Ezekiel, come again. Jerry, come. Pastor, use that microphone and come. This person is already guilty. He's already guilty as charged. That's the law. I want you to try to uh, bend down. Let them cut off your neck. Cameraman, are you there? Race to court. Race to court. We need, we need this on camera. Race to court. Okay, why the hammer of the law demanded his life? Jesus came and said, ah, what did he do? Wait, wait, what did he do? The law says... He's already dead because he has already, the consequence is death for anybody that disobeys the law. 
So his status as we speak is that he's gone. Jesus, okay, let him go. Let me pay for the consequences of what he did. By that, Ezekiel is completely free. Every punishment that Ezekiel is supposed to take, Jesus took it on his behalf. So it's now Jesus that died so that Ezekiel can live. So how will Ezekiel now inherit what Jesus, you can sit up. How will Ezekiel now inherit what Jesus did? That's where our challenge is. Verse 20. It, listen, if the enemy is punishing you twice, it's unlawful. If the enemy is still demanding from you, it's unlawful, it's illegal, it's illegitimate. You have a right to protest. Jesus took, became sin. I didn't say become a sinner. He became sin. That you may become the righteousness of God. Jesus became sickness. That you will become health. Jesus became poor. That you will become wealthy. When Jesus died, two of you were together. So when the Roman soldiers looked at Jesus, they saw only one person. When devil looked at Jesus, they saw two of you inside the grave. When the father looked at Jesus, he saw two of you inside the grave. When Jesus hung on the cross, when the father looked at Jesus, he saw Pastor K and Jesus on the cross. When the Roman soldiers looked at the cross, they saw only Jesus. When the devil and the angels of God looked at the cross, they saw you and Jesus on the cross. That's why the Bible will say that you have been crucified with Christ. Verse 20. Verse 20. Let's read from New King James Version. Then we're going to pray. Shall we read together? I have been crucified. So that day that Christ was crucified, I was present on that cross. You're seeing me now. All of you are seeing me. This is not me. He said, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. How? He says, the life which I now live in the flesh. How, look at how I live it. I live by the faith, by faith, by the faith. No, that's correct. But it's supposed to be by the faith of the Son of God. There are two different things. In other words, I was so, look, get, get me a translation that has by the faith of. Look at what it means. It's not the faith in. It's the faith of. I live by the faith of. So we're so spiritually bankrupt that we couldn't even believe for salvation with our own faith. You don't get any faith to use to believe anything. So how did I arrive at salvation? God had to use the faith of Jesus to bring me out. Jerry and Ezekiel come again. Now, this person, this is the person that is guilty. This is the person that accepted the consequences of the action. How will this person who is guilty benefit from what has been done? Very simple. To accept, accept that this thing that was done has some benefits in your life. That's all. So, you are not saying to yourself that what Jesus did is not enough. The anointing oil, whether we use it or we don't use it, our faith is not in the anointing oil. Our faith is not in 
uh, mantle, that's not our faith. What we are saying to you is Jesus is enough. What Jesus did is enough. So it is for me to accept Ezekiel. Accept that what this person did is for you. So Ezekiel can come and look at, say, uh, before I wait for what Jesus did, I beg, make I do this thing for myself. You go and collect one talisman. You go and collect one oil. He has more confidence in the oil than what Christ has done. So how are we supposed to live our life, henceforth? That you live your life relying on what Christ has done. Not in what you can achieve. Every time your motive to get favor or to get anything rests in your ability, it is rejected before God. You have a critical example with Cain and Abel. Abel brought something that has blood. Cain brought something from his own effort that I am accepted by God because I can fast, because I'm hardworking. God says no. So this thing I'm talking about is how we're supposed to live our Christian life every day. That you arrive at that point where you say that this life you're seeing is not really my own. No. Whatever you see happen in my life is God doing his thing, wearing me as glove. At that particular point in time, you're not living by the law. You are living by the faith of. So you are relying on what Christ has done for your life to be better. But of course, we are too proud not to accept. We are very proud to say, ah, is what Jesus did. We're supposed to live a life of total dependence on God. A life that says, whatever I have become is God. Whoever I will be tomorrow is God. Whatever effort I have is because God gave me the effort. We need to change our motive. I know you're very intelligent. I know you're very hardworking. But know that it is not your intelligence. It is not your hard work that has brought you where you are. It is on learning and relearning. So our Christian life, we're going to advance in our Christian faith. It is I live, but no longer I. The life I live now, I live by the faith of the one who loves me and died for me. I love the last verse. Bring the last verse. That's verse 21. Where it says, do not frustrate the grace of God. That is why I don't view God's grace. I do not, that's a word. I do not frustrate the, the grace of God. For if righteousness comes by the law, that is by my effort, then Christ died in vain. How many of us have frustrated the grace of God? If your album becomes global because it's very good, I'm not saying it wouldn't be good. Let's, put the, let's not put the horse. Is it the horse before the cart or the cart before the horse? Don't put the cart. You know, when you are using a horse to move, when you are flying with a horse, you sit on the horse. The cart is in front. You sit, you sit, sorry, you sit on the cart. The horse is in front. You sit on the cart. The horse is in front. You are moving. Is that not how you move? Yeah. I've never seen anybody who took the cart and put in front and put the horse behind and you are moving. And most times, that's, that's how you frustrate the grace of God. Where you think that is because you prayed very well. That's why you, you passed your exams. Because you fast, you did dry fasting for 40 days. That's why you gave birth. 
Am I saying you shouldn't do that? That's not the place to start. The place to start is not I. The place is him. That my business is thriving in life because I'm very highly connected. We need to unlearn. If you're going to advance in the Christian faith, it doesn't begin with you. Touch three, four people. Say, stop frustrating the grace of God. Say it to four, say it to four people. Oh, oh, oh. Do you think you got your children, all of them, behaving well? Because you're a very smart parent. You're not. Bring, bring that in amplified, amplified, amplified classic. Do you think the reason why they're inviting your band everywhere is because the last time you played, you played so well. Do you think that the reason why you have contract, all this contract you have, is because of you? It's not you. Let's read together. It says, therefore, I do not treat God's gracious gift as something of minor importance and defeat its purpose. I do not set aside, invalidate, and frustrate and nullify the grace, the unmerited favor of God. For if justification, righteousness, acquittal from guilt comes through my effort, then there was no need for Christ to die. You see, this thing I'm teaching is very simple and it's very complicated for many people. Because all your life, you have lived by your effort. Now we're telling you, before you bring your effort, start with the grace of God is available. So when you want to pray, Lord, I thank you for grace. I thank you that every effort I have ever made in life is because of your grace. That's where to begin the Christian faith. Every other thing you're going to do in this kingdom moves the same way. Let me tell you what it means to rely on grace of God. Give me a chair. Let me tell you what it means to rely on grace of God. This is the grace of God. I will abandon my weight, my future, my life, my problems. On his grace. But this thing I'm saying is not as this easy as it is because you're trying to do it by your strength. You're, you're still trying to even do the grace of God thing by your strength. As against Lord, I don't know how to do it. But I rely on you to help me get out of this place. Each time you see yourself worrying about your finances, you know you are frustrating the grace of God. Because inadvertently, what you're saying is that God is an irresponsible father. Now, I'm not talking about the work part. I'm talking about the mindset where we jettison and throw away God and say, let me do it by myself. That's the challenge that we always see in the Christendom. That many of us frustrate the grace of God and come back and cry that God did not do that thing. Lift your hand and pray for a revelation to, to live life by his grace. Lift your hands and pray that prayer. Grant me the grace to, to live life from the standpoint of grace. Heremaroshe kalabata. Mm. So, what do I want to leave you with? Acceptance by faith. Everything Christ has done for you. That's what I want to leave you with. Even when your sins were forgiven, is according to his grace. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's look at verse 6. Let's look at verse 7. Is there a young I am by the grace of God. See, so that we might be to the praise and the commendation of his glorious grace. Again, favor and mercy which he freely bestowed on us. The grace is even free. 
Verse 5 said that he adopted us in the beloved. He became, he told you. Why? So that we who have been adopted will be unto the praise and growth. And this thing is done according to his grace. The grace is free. Look at verse 7. You were forgiven. How? Grace. Verse 7. He said, in him, we have redemption. We have deliverance. We have salvation. How? Through his blood. No, through your efforts. Your deliverance came by your effort. Don't you know how much power you have? The remission, the forgiveness of offenses, our shortcomings and trespasses, in accordance, in accordance means in proportion to with the riches and generosity of his gracious favor, grace. Your deliverance came by grace. How much Essex, how much of your sin did he forgive? He forgave your sin to the proportion of how much grace that is available. Beloved, the question for you as we pray, how do you live by the grace of your economy? Listen, the world is racing to an end. There's no government that has the power to help you. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, nobody has the power to help you. So you're going to unlearn and learn again. And practically start telling God, teach me how to live in what you have already done for me. How did you receive Jesus into your life? Grace, what he has done. That is, you accepted what he has done. How did you become filled with the Holy Spirit? Is it because you fasted, you labored in prayer, and God said, I'm going to reward your labor with effort? No, you accepted what Jesus has done for you. How did you receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit? You accepted what Jesus has done for you. And that is how to do every other thing you want to do. So that you do not frustrate the grace of God. For those of us, who are yet to be married, this message is for you. The people that are married is not because their character is better than your own. No. In fact, some of them have a terrible character. The people that are married is not because there is anything that they did specially. Just God helped them. So don't think, don't think that there is mommy water that has made you not to marry. Remove the thought from your head and rewind your mind that if anything is going to come for me, it will come through his grace. What part do I need to play? Accept first that it is. So if you want to do something, before you take step, you first of all recoil and say, Father, this thing I'm about to do, let your grace be available. I receive the grace. Grace is already available. I receive the grace to get this thing done. Even while you are doing the thing, Father, I still stand by grace so that you don't group around life. Blank. You know, someone asked me a question as we pray. How come the Bible said A, but you'll be seeing B happening? I say it's very simple. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. He didn't say every Bible, every word. What does every word mean? What is the revelation you received for that thing you want to do? He said, I, I, I saw, I have made a research. From my research, I've discovered that everybody that engages in crypto or engages in uh, forest or estate, if you're into estate, you make money. Yes, that is the truth. But is it your truth? Is it your truth? That's what I mean by living by grace. If you think that everybody that did for us, you will jump into it because you know, you feel you have the strength, you have the intelligence. As against God, what is it you want me to do? 
with what is going on in the economy. So ask me a question. He said, now that we are here, what do you think I should do concerning my life? I say, no, I'm not the one that created you. The one that created you has a calendar. He has a plan. He has a book. Consult him. When you consult him, every word from God comes with the capacity to accomplish. But the laziness to also sit down by grace. You see this person we are fasting? It's grace. So. It's grace. If it is not grace, those of you who are fasting by 6 p.m., normally, normally, you don't eat at night. Normally. They say, ah, 6 p.m. by 9 o'clock, better hunger. Your stomach. Ulcer, ulcer pain immediately. You will drink water and drink water. You'll be turning on the bed. So let me distract myself with uh, Facebook. That's when advertisement of okra, uh, okra with prawn. But from that one, they will enter better jollof rice. You say, I reject it in Jesus' name. After some time, tell yourself, I beg. <laughs> Man shall not live by bread alone. But even God understands that I'm fasting. Uh, uh, God knows I fasted for 10 days. Now, is it this one today that I won't fast? Ah. Eba, better eba. But normally, no, someone said we talk about no soup. Normally, at night you are sleeping. Don't do anything for God by your strength. Final word. Businessmen, politicians, don't go by your strength. I know you are intelligent. Believe the strength of God. Make it obvious to God and to yourself. Train your senses, accustom your entire senses to know that this is no longer Pastor Keo. This is Christ. So don't wait to get into problem to start asking for God's help. Train your body for it to be your default position that everything I do I do not want to frustrate the grace of God. Even if you have gone ahead and you remember what I'm saying now, stop and say, Lord, I receive the grace to do what I'm doing. Even if you're an expert, you have become an expert in that thing. Do you know you can be doing business and you have done business, you have been selling t-shirts for 30 years and you have been doing well. It does not mean that if you want to go to market tomorrow. In fact, it's meant to be that you have been training yourself, training yourself, so that your desires and God's desires will become the same. So when the Bible says that he will give you desires of your heart, that is on the premium, on the preposition, that you have been training your heart after God's heart. On the preposition that these 13 years, 14 years have been a Christian, in these 13 years, in these 14 years, you have constantly been asking God, I want to be in your will. My hunger. The Bible says, says you, will, you will search him, you will seek him and find him when you search him with all your heart. That you have been a constant search. You, have, you are in a constant search for God. God, what do you want me to do? At that particular point in time, you now do not need to ask. You walk into it because it's your default position. But if I preach that and I don't preach this, some of us who have not arrived at the rank or at the place where you have trained yourself all the while to walk in God's purpose and God's desire, I will frustrate you. You cannot compare an expert swimmer with someone who is just swimming. If you're an expert swimmer, he jumps into the, the, the swimming pool or the river. His entire system is accustomed on what to do. If you have been training yourself that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your understanding. In all your ways, I acknowledge you, give you give you the desires of your heart. If you have been training yourself not to lean on your own understanding, 
If you have done it for 13 years, you've done it for, you've done it for, you haven't done it for one year. That when something comes, your entire system is not seeking to lean on its own understanding. Your entire system is seeking, God, what is it you're already doing? I don't know whether I've made this illustration in this church before. Adam named all the animals effortlessly. My brothers and my sisters, which one is more difficult? Naming the animals or differentiating between the tree of good and evil. Which one is more difficult? Which one is more difficult? Talk to me. To name the animals and to, to differentiate between the uh, tree of good and evil. Which one? Please, how many animals do we have on earth? Let someone check. Let someone check. Check Google. How many animals do we have? All my days. I've been held in your hands. How many animals do we have in the universe? From the moment that I wake. Remember that he named even the ones under the sea. Oh. Inside, the, inside the ocean. Inside, his one, he named, the one that I flat, he named all. He's Adam that gave it the name that we're calling it now. <laughs> My dear. In billions. Uh, and. Now, I want you to. Two zero comma zero 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 comma one two one comma zero nine one comma zero 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 comma zero 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 twenty billion billion Adam named it effortlessly then Differentiate one tree. One tree. I want you to get to understand. I want us to pray. Ezekiel, one tree. Which one should he have failed? Which one should he have failed? Talk to me. Which one should he have failed? How come he succeeded in a very difficult and complicated assignment and then failed in one plus one? What, how come? Should I give it to you as homework? And that's what we do every day. He was getting answers from within. So he got it right. He was leaning on the presence of God. He got it right. But this particular point now, the devil deceived him that the way you have been doing it before is not working. So he changed method. He leaned on his own understanding. That's why all of us failed our failing to today. And beloved, in your everyday life, what do you lean on? On your own understanding. If you lean on your own understanding, it means you have not learned any lesson from Adam. Any man that leans on own understanding for who you should marry, ah, that will add you. Any body that leans on his own understanding on how he should govern his family or govern his business. The thing will be so difficult and impossible. You, so that you don't frustrate the grace of God. Adam frustrated the grace of God. This answer is within. He said out of your shall flow rivers of living water. So which means from river comes all kinds of solutions. Adam done that solution. And headed for what his eyes can see, what his ears can hear, what has always been done, my submission. I think we should review how we live this Christian life. Do you know why Christianity is difficult? You are using your strength. Do you know why your prayer life is difficult? You are using your strength. Because when you sit down to pray, distractions will come. When you sit down to pray, ah, you have not swept the house. Oh. Hey, you have not washed the matter. Oh, you have not cooked. Uh, you, you have not, that person, you are, you are owing money. Distractions will come. Do you know distractions can come for 30 minutes? Distractions can come for one hour. So what you do is that you turn the devil into your, into your writing pad, into your memory bank. When those distractions, when you want to pray, is when you start remembering, hey, I forgot to call my mother-in-law. Write it down. If you can, you can, listen, you can take that distraction, tire the devil. You can wear him out. Just stay there. 
If you know what to do, put on a, put on a worship. Let the worship play. Wear him out. Start reading scriptures. Wear him out. A time is going to come. Those distractions will all disappear. But the problem with our own prayer, many of us, is that you don't create time for it. You create time to bait. You create time to just with your friends. You create time to sit down and laugh. You create time for village meeting. But you never really create time for your prayers. Everybody smile. We create time to go to the market. So you see, over here market today. Ah, we move. So we can buy it cheap. The phone, you say, ah, that man that, has, that used to bring uh, shoes. This time it is buy two and get one free. You make time. They say there are new cars. There are, um, you know, cars people have problems with. I don't know what they call them. Um, so, so there are houses to buy. Say, uh, 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 the, the, you know, when someone ran into a problem and wants to buy a house, I've forgotten what they call that. Um, distress sales. Distress sales. So there are distress sales houses, distress sales cars. Vium! Vium, you take off. You make adequate time. You can be there for money tonight. Distress it. But you are getting distressed in your spirit. Too. You have so frustrated the grace of God that if the grace of God, if not that his grace, he'll just come in front of you and give you two slaps. Say you are frustrating me. The grace is available. I might see your friend. The way people are looking at me. I might see your friend. Your grandmother is the one that frustrated us today. I will give you children. I said, no, I can't wait for you. I can't wait for you. Just take, my, take my mate. Take my mate and just marry. He frustrated the grace of God. I want us to pray. You, have you been frustrating the grace of God? God said, I will give you finances, but I want to train you to lead nations. He said, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. They said, ah, if you can bring your mother's head, you can get money. So, many of us cut corners because you can wait. Lift up your hands. Towards him. I want to now leave you to pray. 